exactly happens after you have a C-section? Well, from the operating room to going home, today we are gonna talk about it all. If it's your first time here, hello, my name is Chelsea. My husband Drew and I had our daughter in the summer of 2022. We've learned a lot along the way and we wanna share everything that we've learned with you. Today, we're talking about what exactly happens after your C-section. I actually was wheeled away for an emergency C-section after three hours of pushing and not being able to get my daughter out. I was completely unprepared for what was gonna happen and what to expect afterwards. So I wanted to make this video for you. Maybe you're having a scheduled C-section or you had an emergency C-section. Let's talk about what happens. I do just quickly wanna say I'm not a doctor, I'm not a nurse, I'm just sharing everything based on my experience and what I've learned. Because my C-section was a little bit more of an emergency, there's not much that I remember as far as like going into the operating room. So if you have a scheduled C-section, that's where our stories will differ a little bit. Your baby is actually born in the operating room. A C-section is a pretty major surgery, so it does have to take place in an operating room. Your partner or spouse can come. So Drew was actually able to be in the room when Blair was born, which was really special. From the operating room, you are taken to post-op, it's more of like a recovery room. Your nurses will monitor you a little bit more heavily. What happens in post-op? There's really two main things that are going on in the post-operating area. Um, I think you're there for about an hour. It's all kind of a blur to me on all the timing and everything, but I think you're there for about an hour. And one of the main reasons you're there is for a nurse to attend to your immediate wounds. One of the first things that they're gonna do is just make sure you have a pad. Yes, even though you did have a C-section, you will bleed just like a vaginal birth. Your bleeding might be a little bit different because obviously you won't have some of the injuries down there, but you will be bleeding. And so they're gonna be monitoring your blood loss. They're gonna make sure you're not passing any clots and that you're not bleeding excessively. They're also going to push on your uterus. So I think my nurse came over to me every 15 minutes and pushed on my stomach to make sure the uterus was being pushed back down and started shrinking. So two main reasons you're in post-op. One is for the nurse to attend to your wounds and two, you can snuggle your baby. This is where you will be able to hold your baby for the first time. I remember when I got to hold Blair for the first time it was kind of a crazy experience for me because I was still coming down from like the adrenaline rush of everything that had happened, but it was such a special moment and something that I will cherish forever. I think I was in post-op for about an hour and once they had a room ready and they were able to transfer me, I got wheeled holding Blair and Drew took all of our luggage and we went to the mother and baby unit. And this is where you stay for the remainder of your hospital visit. From post-op, you go to the mother and baby unit. In mother and baby, there's a few things that go on. And this is really the process that takes you from the hospital to going home. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna meet the nurse that you have for you for attending to your care, but you're also gonna meet the nurse that you have for baby because the baby will have a separate nurse. In the mother and baby unit, this is the time where you can have family visit, you can have visitors come in and meet your new little baby. Get a piece of paper, get a pen, pull out the notes on your phone, whatever it is, write this stuff down. So when you go to the hospital, you kind of have a list of what to expect. There's a lot of information that they throw at you that kind of was a little overwhelming for me. After your operation, just like most surgeries, you're not able to eat food. You have to have a clear liquids diet for your first meal. I had no clue that this was a normal procedure and I was so bummed because like I said I had pushed for three hours but before that I was induced so I think I was going on almost 40 hours of not having consumed any real food. So bone broth just did not sound appetizing. Just know it's gonna take a little time before you can have some real food, but it's okay. You get to snuggle your baby and the hours will pass right by. Something that I also didn't know was that you're not able to get out of bed right away. My daughter was born at 2.26 p.m. and I wasn't able to get out of bed until 4 a.m. the following morning. I think this had something to do with the epidural I had from when I was pushing, but also I think it had something to do with the medicine that they gave me in surgery. So that time frame might not be the same for you, but I do know you do have to to wait to get out of bed and you have to be assisted by a nurse when you do. Also, this might be a little TMI, but after a C-section, this might happen after a vaginal birth, I'm not sure I didn't have one, but they monitor how much you pee. And going along with that, they want to make sure you're drinking enough water, but because you just had a surgery, you cannot drink out of a straw. I know, it's so weird. I had no clue. I drank out of a straw for the first few hours and my nurse came in and was like, oh my gosh, you can't have a straw. I guess with the C-section, because they move your organs so much, passing gas or going to the bathroom is a little bit harder for women. And so having a straw is just bringing in more gas bubbles to your stomach or something. They can't use a straw. I had no clue. Also, this was really weird. 
and I don't remember actually how long I did this, one of the first things the nurse had me do was practice my breathing. And I don't know if this is a standard procedure for all surgeries or what, but there was like this little machine that I had to breathe into and I had to get it, hold a deep breath. And it was actually crazy how much that actually hurt. Don't want to be discouraging, but it was kind of a little bit weird and something strange. And apparently I was supposed to do every hour on the hour, but time flies when you're in the hospital and I don't know if I really did that. I think they're trying to prevent you from getting pneumonia. I'm not really sure. You can do some research on that if you really want to know, but I just was not prepared to have to track something every hour on the hour. When your nurses are there for you, they're going to really be monitoring your physical care. So they're going to be checking your incision, making sure that looks like it's healing right, that there's not anything weird or gross coming out of it. They're also going to be helping you with your pads and getting all of that set up. The most annoying thing is that you will have a blood pressure cuff on your arm and I think that thing goes off like it felt like it went off every 45 minutes I'm sure it was like a wider gap but that's what it felt like they're constantly monitoring your blood pressure I'm getting bags and bags of IVs I think it was up to like 36 hours after the operation I don't I don't really remember but I just remember I still had my IV in my arm which was super annoying when I was trying to hold my daughter and trying to nurse like I just wasn't prepared for that so just know you're gonna be a little bit uncomfortable the first 24 hours but it's okay because it's all temporary and it will go away and there will be a time when your IV is removed where you can stand up on your own. Okay, let's talk about catheters. This was the biggest thing that I was afraid of going into delivery, which might sound a little dramatic, but it sounds gross and scary and painful, but it's not. I promise. I don't even remember when they put my catheter in when I was pushing. I don't remember them taking it out. I do remember after my C-section them taking them out. That was a little bit weird. It was not painful. Yeah, it's uncomfortable, but it's not painful. Once again, it's temporary and it'll all be over. So when it comes to your physical healing, if that was all the weird stuff that they threw at me that I had no clue I had to track. I had no clue that I needed to monitor any of those things or that I was gonna have to be paying attention to that. If you're going into your C-section or maybe you just had one, just know this is all normal and what I would really encourage you to is have your spouse or your partner be included in what's going on. If there's things that need to be tracked or things that you need help with, let them take charge on that. Let them take the lead so you can just focus on healing and being with your baby. Outside of there being an information overload on all of the physical things that you need, I felt like there's an informational overload on everything that happens with the baby after birth. They track so many things. I had no clue all of this happened. So if you'd be interested in learning like what does my baby need to track what happens to my baby after they're born give this video a like we can include it in our series that we're doing but there is so much stuff that just confused me and i feel like i can share that with you guys you're in the hospital you're with your baby it's the most magical time ever but there will be a point where you finally say i am ready to go home i was in the hospital for a total of three nights the first night was when i got induced and the two nights were after delivery so the morning of the fourth day i was just ready to go home and be in my own space i was tired of machines beeping i was tired of them coming in and messing with my baby every hour i was tired of them asking me all of these questions about when my baby pooped and when my baby peed I, like i just wanted to go home and be in my space now I will say physically, I probably could have stayed another night. It might've been good for me. It might've been nice just to have someone bring me food to help me get out of bed, to be in the hospital bed one more night. But at the same time, I was ready. I was motivated to go home. And so I wanted to go home. You're gonna have to be discharged by your OB, which is your doctor. And you're also gonna have to be discharged by the baby's pediatrician before you can go home. So the three main things that my doctor looked for for me when I was getting discharged was obviously that my incision looked okay. He wanted to make sure that that was healing fine and was safe for me to go home. Um, this is kind of TMI, but <laughs> that you had pooped or farted. Once again, that just goes back to passing gas with how they move all of your organs. They want to make sure that you can do that okay because if you have any blockages, that's super painful. They also wanted to make sure that you walked and you walked a lot. I think there might have been some other stuff he considered or things that I didn't know, but I just remember those were like the big three key things for me that like focusing on while I was in the hospital to make sure I could go home. You've made it this far in the video. I don't want you to feel overwhelmed. I felt overwhelmed. That's why I'm making this video so I can inform you, but sometimes information can feel overwhelming. So I want to give you a few tips and things that after my experience, I know made everything so much better. My first tip, if you've just had a C-section, you need to walk. But I know that I forced myself to get out of bed, to walk around the room. I remember the first little walk that I did was just the hardest thing to get to the toilet. Then I forced myself to get to the shower, forced myself to go sit on the couch and that we had in our room. And then finally, I built up the strength 
and we put Blair in her little rolly bassinet that the hospital had and I pushed her around the wing of the hospital multiple times. So if you just had a c-section get out and walk and even do that when you get home. Walking will just help you recover so much better. A second tip and this one is huge. I wish I would have done this. I just didn't know but have your spouse take notes when the nurse is talking. Most of the time, the nurses are gonna direct all the information to mom. And I understand it. The mom's in the hospital bed. It's their baby. Like, I understand why. I was in no mental place to be taking notes for what I needed to do for my own health and to be taking notes for what Blair needed for her own health. Anytime the nurse came over, Drew came over and he stood next to me and he listened to what she was saying. But I just feel like you need to really be intentional about asking them to do that. Make sure they're taking notes, make sure they're knowing what's going on and helping track things because they're gonna ask you so many questions and sometimes it can feel overwhelming. Be intentional in including your spouse in your recovery. Third biggest tip, and this is so important, do skin to skin with your baby as much as possible. Things seem crazy, there's so much going on. People are coming in and out of your room, nurses are saying this, nurses are saying that, baby's getting checked here, family wants to come see them, oh, food's here now. But there's nothing more important than getting that skin to skin with your child. And this kind of leads me into my next tip, which is to say no to any visitors that you don't want there. This is the birth of your child. And yes, there might be some people in your life that want to come to the hospital and see your child. And I understand that. But this is your birth. It's your child. And you can set the boundaries. If you've just had a C-section, that is a major surgery. And you're not really in a place to want to be hospitable or host or really just like welcome someone into such an intimate environment. When you're in the hospital, they're going to be checking your pads for your blood loss. They're going to be checking your incision. They're going to be having lactation consultant come in and checking for this and that. Like you're going to be physically exposed and those things are just uncomfortable when there's people in the room that you don't want them to see those parts. And finally, if you want to stay an extra night in the hospital, you've worked out with your insurance or they're offering that, do it. It is okay. I wanted to go home. I was ready. But then there's parts of me that looking back was like, you know what? I want to give myself the freedom if I do this again to stay an extra night. You're not weak. It's okay. Like, it's okay to need that time to transition. It's okay to need a little bit of extra help. And it's totally fine. So if you want to stay an extra night, do it. And so that's it. From the operating room to going home, that's what happens after you have a C-section. If you're watching this video because you're having a planned C-section or your C-section was an emergency, I hope it was informational for you. I hope you learned some things. If you have any questions or just some thoughts, leave them down in the comments below. I want this to be an environment that's encouraging for all mothers and mothers to be. Well, make sure you're subscribed to our channel because this is just the first video in a series that we're doing that focuses all on parenthood. We're starting off with delivery, but we're going to walk through every single thing that we've learned having our daughter as first-time parents. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll See you next week.